Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, this is Scott K. Today we're going to be taking a look at an Alice style keyboard called the Bear 65 by Jackie. This is actually the V2 version, which is an improvement over the original with an updated gasket mounting structure and slight design changes as well. However, the familiar brass bear claw remains underneath with the nice rounded edges and soft and cuddly design aesthetic like a bear. Besides the interesting shape of an Alice style keyboard, what else is interesting is that the Bear 65, being a new keyboard from 2022, is somewhat different. It's missing something. A big pack of foam you stuff to the gills like every other keyboard comes with nowadays. You just get one with this keyboard, and it's just for the plate. So without the usual, would you like some keyboard with all that foam approach? How does the Bear 65 V2 fare? Well, we're gonna find that out today. Then, I'm going to build this thing like how we used to build keyboards many years ago. No foam, just a shelf liner. Maybe some napkins, right? Old school. Then I'll build it again like every new keyboard these days. Stuffed with everything imaginable. Then you can decide whether Jackie is doing the right thing by staying away from the foam hype, or if they should also embrace the foam revolution. So, let's get started. So the Bear 65 V2 looks to share the same box as the original, which is not a really a bad thing or a good thing, right? It's just a box. Nice Bear logo and studio name that created it, Jackie. As you go deeper into the contents, you see the usual. Some plates, in this case I have the aluminum, and also the flexible polycarbonate plate. Then a hot swap PCB. Then the one and only foam in this entire box. This one single lonely plate foam. You also have the typical gaskets and the hardware you put the keyboard together with. Now, the case. The sample I have is the E-White colorway, so I guess my bear is a polar bear? Not a bad thing since polar bears are probably the most alpha of all current bears out there, probably the bear species that you have the least chance of survival against. As mentioned before, this is an Alice layout board, or you could also call it Arisu because it has arrow keys which means it's split down the middle and it's supposed to be more ergonomic to type on. Overall finishing is great and I rather like the bearish rounded edges and soft overall undertones of this case. Very different from the edgy look of my Owlab spring which is also another Arisu or Alice style keyboard. Flip it over and like the V1, the Bear 65 V2 also features a nice and hefty brass weight right in the center. I originally thought that it was aluminum, then I took it off and I confirmed that it's pretty heavy so this is definitely brass. The board features a 6 degree typing angle and the V2 has a slightly lower front versus the original to make the typing more comfortable. And like a proper gasket mounted board, it also features a daughter board. Now, looking at the PCB, it's nice and black. Standard thickness PCB with a little bare logo and lots and lots of flex cuts. But these flex cuts are on the shorter side, so you won't get like the crazy isolated flex you find on some of the other boards with longer or more segmented cuts. However, you'll see later that this really doesn't matter for this bear at all. Flip it around and you got the standard KO hot swap sockets here. This also comes in solder for those that want to keep it old school. Now, what is interesting is that this PCB has two JST cable slots. I really don't know why, but both of them work so you can choose which one you use. They're kind of close to each other anyways too, so take your pick. The PCB has no per key RGB but down firing LEDs. But this case I have is aluminum, so it doesn't really do much here. Maybe if you had a PC case, it might. Now, I got two plates with this sample. The more flexible PC plate, as well as the more OG aluminum. The major difference besides the material is that the PC plate has solid gasket tabs, whereas the aluminum has leaf spring style cuts to promote more flex. As mentioned before, it literally came with one sheet of foam. Play foam and play foam only. I would say that this, more so than dampening, this foam will actually help keep the plate foam under control and not squishing down too much as you're trying to st install switches and stuff. This board also doesn't use any standoff, so you can just imagine how that's going to be like. Now for the gaskets. Interestingly enough, it comes with two different sets. A thinner 2mm set for the bottom and a thicker 2.5mm set for the top. Normal convention would dictate that the thicker foam goes to the bottom, but no, oh no, not for the Bear 65. However, the thinner one is actually softer, so I guess that makes up for it. As you start to place the gaskets onto the case, you'll realize that there are also these little tiny gaskets that you need to place on the side that helps to keep the plate locked in and from moving around. So, to get a baseline of how this sounds, I built it exactly how they provided it, with the plate foam and PC plate. I used Everglide slabs here and used a set of lubed Wuche onion switches as well. 
I was a bit concerned having no case dampening below, but also realized how dense this case is, so I hope it's okay. For keycaps, I decided to go with a set of EPBT black on white to keep it classic. Now, remember what I said about the flex cuts? Well, the design of this board is very flexible. Having all the space underneath and using low profile connectors, this thing really flexes, especially with the PC plate. So hey, it didn't need longer or different flex cuts after all. So what does it sound like? You know, listening to this keyboard was very nostalgic. It was like a more pure keyboard sound without much sound modifiers inside. After building keyboard after keyboard stuffed with foam, it felt a bit refreshing as well. But it does sound a little bit hollow though. I did the same thing with the aluminum plate to try that out. With the aluminum, you get a bit more of that clack, and slightly louder sound as well. Even with the stiffer aluminum plate, the Bear 65 flex very nicely, so take a look. So then I got an idea. If the concept of this board is to bring back the old school typing experience, why don't we go really old school in terms of modding? That meant I pulled out everything, like the plate foam. I mean, like 3 years ago, you wouldn't be able to just go find plate foam that custom fit your keyboard readily made and available for every keyboard out there like today. Then, remember this? Yes, the good old zip and fit shelf liner, my old friend. For switches, I grabbed some holy pandas. Remember some years ago when these were like the meta of keyboards? Well, feels period correct here. And obviously, I used the aluminum plate, staple of custom mechanical builds before all the flex 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 hype train that we're going through now. So I put it all together and took it for a spin. Yep, this sounds very classic, straight keyboard sound. Just clean, no real style modifications through foams or anything like that. Get all that aluminum and just holy panda. This sounds like a keyboard from the simple ages, right? Remember when we used to build Tofus and KBD-75s and GK-61s? That's kind of like what it felt like. But then, a lot has happened since then, right? I mean, for sure, how we mod keyboards have changed. I mean, how keyboard kits come now has changed. There are so many weird things we have started to do to our boards. So I thought, what does this thing sound like done up new school, like 2022? So I pulled it apart and threw on some P foam onto the PCB. Then put the plate foam back on the top because you need more foam, right? It's all about that flexible Thaki plates now, so PC plate is the choice right here. Then some long pole stem switches because that's what's popular nowadays. Flip it around, gotta throw on some tape for that extra thock, so two layers of blue masking tape right here as well. Finally, we can't leave the case open, no no, it needs to be filled. This time with some polyfill to preserve flex and you know fill up the, the extra cavity and volume, take away any potential chance of any kind of hollowness or whatever it might be. I mean, the interesting thing is, if you bought a nice keyboard kit on Groupie these days, all this stuff will actually be part of that keyboard. So what does this new school board sound like now?
Yep, same board, but that definitely sounds very different. I didn't do this to say one way of modding or one approach to keyboard design is better than the other. I just wanted to show how much keyboard design and modifications have changed over the years. When it comes to the Bear 65, Jackie decided to go more old school and not jump on the P foam and filler hype. This produces a different kind of typing experience as you can see right here. However, if you do like the direction others have taken with keyboard design, incorporating the foam, you know what? You can do the same thing to this Bear 65 as well, or any board for that matter. The longer I am in this hobby, the more keyboards I have been looking at, the more and more I realize that preference is the main driver. It's like a pizza. There are many ways to do a pie. Some love pineapples and barbecue chicken on theirs, and others will kill you for eating that. But at the end of the day, if you're happy with your Korean barbecue Chicago style deep dish, hey, more power to you. I'll stick with the thin New York slice. For me, I ended up keeping the Bear 65 more old school. It just reminds me of the days when lube and a sheet of paper towel or shelf liner was the definition of keyboard modding. It's a little simpler and it just kind of gave me some good feels. So you know what? That's how I'm going to keep it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll have more content for you in the future. If you don't, I won't make any more. I'm just kidding. Or not. <laughs>